today and I want to remind everybody that uh, through the Meet Your Candidate series uh, I will take questions through the Facebook live feed if you have a question or comment but we are unable to take calls uh, during that this half hour so and uh, I want to welcome here to the studio we have Frank D'Ambra and uh, Frank is running for Martin County Commission District 3 which is currently held by Commissioner Jenkins um, Frank is an accomplished, results-driven professional with wide-ranging skills developed and demonstrated in multiple corporate and municipal settings. Relationships are key to success in both the public and private sectors, and Frank has a reputation as a superb communicator, establishing and fostering productive relationships with internal and external stakeholders, collaborating across all levels of an organization, forming solid community partnerships, and developing high-performing teams. As manager, Frank focused on instilling a culture of continuous improvement, coaching and mentoring individuals and teams to achieve their professional best. His career has been marked by continuous progression to roles of increasing responsibility and scope with a solid record of achievement in every position, leveraging his strategic insight and strong analytical ability to develop long-range plans, introduce process improvements to increase efficiency, and by listening to customers to provide desired solutions for their needs. Frank has successfully led operations with responsibility for as many as 400 employees, sales of more than $4 billion, and assets of $10 billion. Working in the public sector has given Frank an in-depth and understanding and appreciation for the multiple levels of regulation, including municipal, state, and federal requirements, and his attention to detail and organizational skills has helped in collaboration with others to deliver solid results for his community. Gathering data and listening to the needs and opinions of constituents helps Frank formulate strategies to meet identified needs, balancing competing priorities and finding common ground for agreement. It is Frank's goal to bring his visionary leadership, track record of operational excellence, and outstanding interpersonal skills to advancing the priorities and preferences of the residents of District 3 and all of Martin County. Frank, welcome to the studio. Thank you, Casey. I'm very happy to be here. Well, it's my pleasure, and I know the listeners are anxious to get to know a little bit more about you. So, Frank, let's start out. We've got a great introduction here with your bio, but tell us a little more about your background. I know that uh, you served on the council down in Tequesta. I did, I did. So yeah, I'm, I, I'm admittedly the new kid on the block, relatively speaking here, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing um, because we, in, in my corporate life, we have lived pretty much all over the country with the exception of the Pacific Northwest. So, and I've been involved in community affairs just about everywhere we've lived. So I've got to uh, have the opportunity to see what works, what doesn't work, um, different styles, different approaches to uh, finding solutions. So that's been very, very beneficial. So yeah, we, we moved to, Qu to Quest in 2003. Uh, we had a home there. Uh, we were back and forth for a position I had up in Illinois. And we settled permanently in, in 2008 uh, here in Florida. My wife was born and raised here. Um, she was born in Miami. Uh, I met her when I was in law school at the University of Miami. Um, and uh, we have, again, as I said, Moved, moved quite a bit through the corporate career. Uh, so we've raised our family in, in different places. But uh, at this point, um, my uh, oldest daughter and my 11 month old granddaughter. Congratulations. Um, has, thank you, has uh, decided to move back to Florida. Uh, my younger daughter and my two grandsons were already here uh, in Tequesta. So uh, we were looking for a place for the extended family to live. And obviously being in Tequesta, um, we were very familiar with Martin County, uh, know a lot of people up here. In fact, our village manager, our chief of police, our fire chief, and our village attorney all reside up here in Martin County. And so we, we, as I said, we know a lot of people here, frequented Martin County often. And so when we were looking for a place for the extended family, uh, we, we decided we would make the move to Hope Sound in Martin County. And uh, we love to, still love Tequesta, but we love Martin County just as much. Um, so for me, community service has always been very, very important. Um, I'm at a point in my life now, I, I had a very successful career, I was very blessed, worked very hard, but I was very blessed. And um, you know, I look at, <clears throat> you get to a point where you really want to give back. And you know, I thought long and hard about this, I prayed about this, and for me, taking an active role in government was the way I felt that I could give back in the, in the very best way possible. So as you mentioned, uh, I was on the Tequesta Council for almost 10 years. I resigned, obviously, when I moved up here uh, to Hope Sound. 
And uh, even before I was on the council, uh, I was serving. I was a member of the audit committee for the village. I was chair of the public safety pension fund, uh, and then came onto the council where I served as mayor and vice mayor as well. And um, you know, I, I'm looking obviously for the opportunity to continue to serve. And uh, after speaking with a lot of the people I know up here and a lot of people I've met, uh, neighbors in, in Hope Hills, people in Hope Sound, uh, other parts of the county, Stewart, Palm City, et cetera, um, talking about what the issues are and what, what are the things that they're most concerned about going forward um, and talking about you know, policy solutions and policy approaches to some of those concerns. Um, people kind of started saying, look, you need, you need to run. And so I said, well, let me think about it. And like I said, I thought about it, prayed about it, and decided, yeah, I'm going to throw my hat in the ring. Um, so, so here I am. So here you are today. So I, I love that you've been out about in the community and talked about different issues. So let's talk about that. That's mm -hmm. what people want to know. Do you know the issues here in Martin County? So what would be the top three <clears throat> issues you would focus on as commissioner? Well, in speaking with people, the one thing that consistently comes up is growth. And um, I know there are probably some folks who would like to see absolutely no growth. Uh, there are some people who would like to see more aggressive or rapid growth, but I find the bulk of the people are not anti-growth, but they want growth that is measured, that is controlled, that ultimately, you know, benefits uh, the residents of, of, of the uh, county. And, you know, in speaking with people, I've kind of developed four criteria that I said I would use as a commissioner to make a decision. And I said the first one is, whether it's growth within the urban district or without, it needs to maintain the fundamental character of Martin County, because um, that's what's attracted people here. That's why people have come here and lived here uh, you know, for so many years. The second thing is, assuming you pass test number one, is what about the infrastructure? Because with growth, uh, you have multiple infrastructure issues. You've got public safety, which is obviously probably the first and foremost responsibility of, of government. Um, but you have things like roads and schools, and even though the commission doesn't directly oversee schools, a lot of people have mentioned that as a concern. Uh, water, et cetera. So those issues have to be addressed. So uh, if, if there's going to be a development, are, are the necessary infrastructure pieces already in place, or do they need to be put in place? So if they need to be put in place, who's going to pay for those? To me, it should be the developers that pay for those things. Um, <clears throat> the third thing is if you're going to make any kind of a change or any kind of a variance that might enhance the value of that property to the person who, who is looking to develop it or sell it, there needs to be a concurrent and commensurate uh, benefit, probably a greater benefit to the residents of the, of the county itself. And then the last thing is, <clears throat> assuming you meet all the, uh, the first three, is, is there community support for it? Um, because if there isn't community support, I mean, if, it's, uh, if the majority of people say, no, this isn't what we want, then as a representative of the community that's been elected by the community to serve them, then I think it's the obligation of the commissioner in, you know, to say, no, this doesn't comport with what our residents want and what our, our residents' vision is for the future of this, of this county. So right now there's a, an issue that was contentious when it was passed, and they're looking at modifying it currently, and that is the Rural Lifestyle Correct. Amendment. Um, let me go back. You, you sound like you're very familiar with it. Would have you voted for that Rural Lifestyle Amendment? When the, it the, first, ori the original the, the version? The original, yes. Um, <clears throat> I've looked at it. Um, I think that the there was probably some positive intent uh, to – the initial passage, which kept it within that one-mile boundary. Um, there were some things in there that I think did make some sense. So, for example, uh, when we lived up in Baltimore, we actually bought into what I would call the first environmentally sensitive or eco-development in Howard County. Howard County um, had a requirement, uh, or their zoning was set up so that you couldn't have more than one home for every three acres. Um, there was a family who owned a farm. Uh, parents passed away, farm got passed on to the siblings or the children, and they wanted to develop the community to get value out of it, but <clears throat> they didn't want to just disperse homes over these three-acre plots. So there was a, the farm had about 110 acres to it. 
So they said, well, what we'd like to do is cluster the homes. So we'd build 32 homes on one acre plots, but then we retain the other 75, 80 acres in, in a natural state, mm -hmm. which they put into pasture land. So the idea of clustering and, and then preserving the land um, was something that, you know, Howard County at that time said yes to. And I happened to be the first president of, it was called Paternal Gift Farm, uh, when everything transitioned over to the homeowners. Now, what was key to that was that in the transfer of land, there were deed restrictions that specifically stated that that land could never be developed. It had to remain in perpetuity in its natural state. Um, when I look at <clears throat> what's happening uh, with, with Martin County right now, it isn't I think there's some provisions that have been put in place. I, I know with Discovery, there's, I think, a three-member board that um, is supposed to oversee that, that conserved land, and I believe there's a member of Audubon that sits on that. So, you know, people could take some comfort that, uh, that that land will be preserved, but when I've asked the question, are there additional actions that could be taken to, to guarantee that those lands are preserved, whether they're conservation easements or deed restrictions, et cetera. I haven't gotten a clear answer on whether those kind of protections actually exist. So um, again, I wasn't here when the, uh, when the initial uh, change was mm -hmm. passed. Uh, like I said, I think there probably was some merit to some, some com components of it. Um, you're, you're gonna have some growth. You have to be able to accommodate growth. Uh, I believe the urban uh, district is getting fairly well built out. So then the question is, where does your growth go? And it probably makes sense to have it concurrent uh, with that urban district. Um, I was at the December meeting when they voted to extend it beyond the one mile. Um, that I w was not in favor of. And I know that uh, with that vote having been taken, and because of the magnitude of the change, it has to go to the state. And the state uh, produces what they call an ORC report, which is objections, recommendations, and considerations. And then that has to come back to the county, and then the county has to respond to that. Um, so it isn't a, a completely done deal yet. Um, that's going to have to be reconsidered by the commission, and there's going to have to be a second vote before it becomes permanent. And um, so there's still an opportunity for people to weigh in on this, and if they feel strongly that, you know, you, the, the original amendment's already passed, it's already in place. But if you feel strongly that you don't want to see it extend beyond that, um, you know, then people still have an opportunity to raise their voices and make that clear. Um, but again, there, is, there does have to be some growth as I kind of laid out my four criteria, but it's gotta be smart and it's gotta be sensitive, uh, particularly to the environment. And again, it needs to have community support. Again, we're speaking with Frank D'Ambra. He's Republican running for uh, Martin County Commission, District 3. Uh, Frank, how about uh, another issue that was just recently passed in the last six months? That is the Brightline train station agreement. Uh, is that something that you would have supported as well, or would have you been a, a, a no vote on that? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Brightline's interesting. As you, as you know, um, the uh, folks in... Palm Beach County, particularly Tequesta, and our uh, compatriots in Martin County and going up the Treasure Coast uh, really had mixed feelings about the idea of Bright Line coming through. Um, hang on a second, let me turn this off. Sorry about that. That's okay, I always forget, it's usually um, my phone. But the reality is um, it's passed. Um, you know, I know when we were in Tequesta and people were raising uh, uh, issues about Bright Line, and we did everything we could to. Uh, just like many of the people in Martin County did to try and forestall that project. Um, it nevertheless passed. But I think the, the counties did a good job of trying to extract uh, concessions from Bright, Brightline and things that would, you know, in essence, uh, if, it, if it was going to come through, kind of improve, uh, improve the circumstances. I think the totality of Brightline um, probably ends up being a plus because at the Ford East Coast Railroad, in conjunction with the expansion of the ports in Miami and Fort Lauderdale, was going to increase train traffic, particularly the freight trains and particularly the size of those trains. So with Brightline coming along, what you got was a double tracking, you got welded tracks, which hopefully reduces the sound. The Brightline trains move in, you know, through, through these intersections very, very quickly. So they're not really too disruptive. You're gonna get the new bridge, finally, <clears throat> over the St. Lucie River, which is gonna be a huge improvement. 
So when you consider all those factors and then you say, okay, do you want to have a station in Stewart? Is that a convenience that people... Let me let me oh. rephrase the question one second. And not just the station. Are you supportive of the fact that it's grants? Well, we don't have them yet, but hopefully it'll be grants. Um, $45 million worth of taxpayer money funding it rather than the company itself. No, I think the company and grants should have been the, the basis for the funding of the station. Um, I don't know that, I don't believe that in this case, from what I understand about the circumstances, that using taxpayer money was the, the appropriate use. But I do think, when I've talked to residents who, who, who obviously acknowledge, hey, Brightline's here, um, if, you, if there's a station in Stewart, will you use it? Will you use it to go to Orlando? Will you use it to go south to West Palm or Fort Lauderdale or Miami or the airports? Mm -hmm. And what I'm hearing, even if it's begrudging, is, yeah, I can see myself using it. I can see it being a benefit. So the concept of the station I support, how you pay for it to your exact point, no, I don't believe taxpayer money should have been used for that purpose. Okay, Frank, and how about we'll switch topics again to term limits. Are you supportive of term limits for commissioners? Right now there are no term limits. That's true. Uh, a couple times through Tallahassee <clears throat> it's been brought up but uh, has been removed. I know that they put the term limits on school board members but not the commission. So if you were a commissioner, yeah. would you advocate for that? I would. Um, there are term limits for the commission in Palm Beach County, uh, two terms of four years. Um, in the village of Tequesta, we didn't have term limits, um, but the, our, our council voted to put that to the residents uh, in the form of three, no more than three three-year terms. Interestingly enough, the residents turned that down. Um, and I, I have some thoughts about what, you know, why that is, but I think that term limits are important. I, you know, uh, George Mason, one of our founding fathers, uh, basically uh, made a statement that Nothing would, comp and I'm going to paraphrase here, but nothing would right. compel um, representatives to 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 do the honorable things and and to look out for the for the people, than knowing that you are going to basically return to your to your daily lives, and you're going to have to live under whatever laws or regulations you pass. Um, I think the founding fathers believed that because at that time, um, people didn't make a permanent career of, of, of a political position. You know, uh, you went to Congress for three or four months, that's all it was in session, then you returned to your normal life, just like Lincoln served in Congress, and then he returned to his life in Springfield, Illinois, as an attorney. So you had, you, uh, you know, you, had, you came back to the people, you lived amongst the people right. who had sent you to office in the first place. Obviously, we've lost that at the federal level, we sure have. where we do need term limits. Um, we have them at the state level, which I think is great. Um, and I do think they should apply to the county as well. Uh, I think uh, having you know new blood in there every so often, I, I think is a very very valuable thing. At the ver at the local level, at the level where you know if you're an incorporated municipality, whatever, and let's say you you know you've got six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand people, it's a little trickier. And I think that's why Tequesta, when given the opportunity, turned it down because I think um, they're looking at it from the standpoint of. Um, we, well, first of all, in Tequesta, you had to run every two years, so okay. it wasn't an extended period of time. So if people weren't happy, they could they could vote you out pretty quickly. Um, but then also sometimes in the smaller communities, it can be difficult to get qualified people to run. Right. And so that that can be a challenge. And if if you've got people that are at that local level and they're doing a good job and you want to keep them, you know, there's some merit to, to that as well. So I I think for all those reasons, the voters in Tequesta said. No, we're, we're going to pass on term limits. But I think if you talk to most people, they would say, yeah, when it comes to the county, the state, or the federal, term limits are something that's beneficial. And I'm all for it. Let's at least put it on the ballot and let the people decide, Absolutely. Right? I agree. So uh, we've not had that. I think that'd be a wonderful thing for people to have that option. Again, we're speaking with Frank D'Ambra. He's work, uh, running for commission, Martin County Commission District 3. Frank, what do you, just to get an idea of you as a, a commissioner, how do you feel about government-owned properties? So right now the, the county owns like the snack shacks out on the beaches. They have a water park here in Palm or off Willoughby in Stewart. Um, they just took over the golf course operations. What is your feeling about those types of businesses that could be privately run and, and mm -hmm. own? And there was issues with the golf course, why the county took it back. But just what's your general feeling about that? Well, I think when it comes to uh, the conservation of lands or it comes to some of the recreational opportunities, 
or, or facilities on public lands. I, th I think there is a role for the, for the government to play there. Um, do I believe that the government should actually run those operations? No, I, I would prefer, it's one thing to own them, it's a, but to actually operate them on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm not sure that's you know, in, in uh, the taxpayer's best interest. I'd rather see those facilities leased out and bring in people from the private sector who have experience and knowledge in those particular types of uh, activities and uh, have, have them lease it from the county. And, uh, uh, and that also is a, becomes then a, hopefully a, genera a revenue generator for the county or at least an offset to whatever expenses that the county uh, in incurs as a result. So I think that's the more prudent way to go. Certainly, uh, the water issues are our number one issue. We have a lot yes. of the building and infrastructure, the growth, all that yeah. is is problematic, but our lifeblood is our, our water issue. So tell me your, your feelings as a commissioner. There's only so much commissioners can do, but nonetheless, your voice is very important. Yeah. Uh, wh where do you see yourself helping Martin County with our well, discharges and I mean, runoff? And to septic? your point, water is critical, and obviously, uh, you know, Tequest has the same situation with the Loxahatchee River, which for many years was was challenged. It's gotten better, um, but I uh, but water is absolutely critical to uh, the survi uh, the survival of 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 our civilization, so to speak. So, yeah, right. I mean, Brian Mass I think has done a, has really done yeoman's work trying to get the federal government, and the Army Corps of Engineers, to act responsibly and to end the discharges, which I completely agree with. Uh, the funding that's coming forward to uh, restore the Everglades flow, I think, is absolutely critical. Um, I think it's also important that uh, homes that are on septic systems move away from septic uh, to sewer. Now, that's in Palm Beach County, um, Tequesta and Jupiter Inlet County were probably the last, well, in the northern part of the county, they were the, the last two areas in, where they were in a coastal environment that finally went to sewer. One of the things I was surprised at, because we moved into Hope Hills, and we border, we back up to Jonathan Dixon Park. Mm -hmm. And the land that's immediately behind us is a slough that has water feeding into the Loxahatchee River. And yet our entire neighborhood is on septic, right. which surprised the heck out of me. I'm thinking we're, we're, this neighborhood can have a direct impact on water quality. So I know there's a program to convert from septic to sewer. Um, I, I'd like to see that move a little more aggressively. Uh, because again, you're right, there's only, we can't do everything, but there are things the commission has control over and it has an ability to impact, and that's one of those things that they can impact. Frank, it's been wonderful to have you here this half hour. We've got about 30 seconds left. Frank D'Ambra, how can people reach out to you and follow your campaign? Um, well, we haven't formally launched a campaign site uh, yet. We will do that uh, probably by the end of next week. Um, so people can, if, if they're interested, uh, we'll have an annou announcements coming out and we'll have a website up and we'll be communicating with people and letting people know how they can get in touch with us. Excellent. Frank D'Ambra, Martin County Commission District 3, thank you so much for coming into the studio today and hope to have you back.